Grace to you and peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Curtis of St. John AME Church located in Cleveland, Ohio, and it is my joy to welcome you to this time of prayer and meditation. And we hope and pray that you are safe wherever you are on this Wednesday, December the 14th, 2022. As we move through the season of Advent, Christmas is drawing closer and closer to us as we anticipate the arrival and the birth of Jesus Christ, the newborn King. So in that spirit, let us now pray this special prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So today we will meditate on a familiar passage of scripture taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Hear now the Gospel of our Lord as it is recorded in the Revised Standard Version. Jesus says, Pray then like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'd like to turn your attention for our reflection today on the 11th verse, where Jesus says, Give us this day our daily bread. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Let's face it, as children, most of us couldn't wait for the day to come when we would grow up and be out on our own. We got tired of living under our parents' rules and having to be under their rules and regulations, and we wanted to strike out and be on our own. And then when the day comes and we do grow up and we find ourselves out on our own, we look back at the old days and think about how good we had it when we didn't have to pay our own bills. The reality is, as children, our parents and other responsible adults were charged with our care and our well-being. Back then, we did not have the capacity to care for ourselves, nor could we provide for our daily needs at such a young age. And today we stand grateful for parents and grandparents and other responsible adults in our lives who in our youthful years invested their time and money into making us who we are today. Though I've always known that my parents love me, I knew early on that I was not going to be a permanent resident in their house. There would come a day when I would be expected to go out and make it on my own as an adult. Independence from our parents and childhood caregivers is in and of itself a good thing. And it's something that we work hard to achieve in our adult lives. However, in our spiritual lives, we find that we have a different relationship 
with God. Whereas in our physical human life, we long to move on from our parents, and that's the way generations move. We raise the next generation, and that generation goes out on its own and raises the next generation. We are taught to become independent of the generations before us. But in our spiritual lives, we have a different relationship with God. Go with me back to the book of Exodus in the Old Testament. And you may recall when Israel was delivered from Egypt and they were headed towards the promised land. And during that difficult journey, they were totally dependent on God. You may recall that a cloud guided them by day and a pillar of fire led them by night. Through that journey, the children of Israel relied on God to provide a daily delivery of manna and quail for their sustenance. Now fast forward to Matthew's Gospel, and here we see Jesus Christ himself teaching about prayer. He exhorts the hearers not to pray long and flowery prayers that impress others with their big and fancy words. Rather, Jesus teaches them a simple, straightforward prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. Those of you who tune in with us every week for these Wednesday telecasts know that we pray the Lord's Prayer every Wednesday. We pray this prayer every first Sunday after receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion. And many pray this prayer every day in their personal devotion and prayer time. In this prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer and that others refer to as the model prayer, Jesus petitions God to do many important things. He petitions God to, to let his kingdom come and to let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He petitions God to forgive us our debts or our trespasses as we forgive those who have debts or trespasses against us. He also petitions God to lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. But if you go back to the 11th verse, he makes another specific intention that ties into what we are discussing today. Jesus petitions God to give us this day our daily bread. Bread is not only sustenance for the physical body, but bread is also a metaphor for deliverance. Remember, this is Jesus who is talking. This is Jesus who is asking God to give us this day our daily bread. This is Jesus who himself is the one who delivers us from our sins. So he's asking God to feed his flock daily, but he's also asking God to deliver us daily because all of us need to be delivered from something each and every day of our lives. As I said a few moments ago, remember who's talking in this prayer. It's Jesus, the one who is the bread of life. This is Jesus asking God the Father to give us this day our daily bread. And he's the one, Jesus the Christ, who says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. When we grow up, we eat bread that we buy. And we eat bread that we have earned from our own industry. When we grow up, we don't rely on others to feed us because we can do that for ourselves. But on this Wednesday in Advent, as we're in the third week of Advent, and as Advent is winding down, and as we move toward Christmas, we anticipate the coming of Jesus. And we're reminded that God provides bread for us that money cannot buy. And we thank God that each and every day, he does indeed give us our daily bread. Bread that sustains us in this mortal life and bread that will deliver us and sustain us into 
eternal life, bread that came down from heaven, and bread that will carry us to salvation. The songwriter said it best in referring to this bread. He said, Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me, as thou did break the loaves beside the sea. Beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord, my spirit pants for thee, O living word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Since today's text was centered around the Lord's Prayer, and we read that as part of our gospel lesson today, we will do something different on this Wednesday, December the 14th. We will offer praise to God with the familiar words of the Gloria Patri. Would you join me? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Please accept this as our invitation to you to join us here at St. John AME Church on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for our worship experience. We are located at 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. For those of you who are unable to be with us in our sanctuary, we invite you to join us virtually at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live and then later on YouTube. Have a great day, a great wet rest of the week, and be blessed, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.